Do you have any photos of your children or grandchildren that you'd like to make look more professional? Well, with Luminar Neo, that's really easy to do. I'm Darlene with Digital Photo Mentor, and in this video tutorial, which is a clip of one of my weekly live streams here on YouTube, you'll learn how to remove the background on a portrait and replace it with something different. Watch as I take this image and turn it into the look of a studio portrait. So if you're ready to level up with your people pictures, let's get started. Okay, so this one I've actually done a little bit of editing on and it was originally a color image and I've done some editing and I've turned it into black and white. Okay, so you can see the sort of blotchiness on her little cheek. So I fixed up that and really spruced up, punched up her eyes, but the background is kind of plain. So do we want to change the background? Okay, so to do that, you just go to layer properties, masking and portrait background. Now, if it's not a portrait, you would do background removal, but portrait background is super easy. Okay, so I'm just going to say remove the background. Okay, and voila, it's not perfect, but we can fix it. Okay, so it missed this teddy bear here. So the teddy bear has to come with us. So in here, this is the way to define the subject. Okay, so right now I'm going to tell it this is part of the subject as well. Okay, so I need to tell it to include the teddy bear. Now I'm going to get all of it. And then I'm going to come back with the transition brush and a smaller one and go around the edge. Okay? And it will find the edge of the teddy bear. Okay. There's a little bit missing right there as well. Uh, I can't really see where the edge is, but I'll come back to that. Okay, so that is the teddy bear. I missed the part. Okay, so the teddy bear is all in here. Okay. What I'm doing with that is I use the backslash key to see the original so that I could find the edge of the teddy bear, just like that. And if there's parts that are missing, like in here, okay, this is the baby's shoulder is missing. And you can see as I tell it, object okay like i did with the teddy bear as i tell it object it finds the edge for me okay and i'll do a transition around the edge so transition just helps to find the edge of the subject it's harder when it's blurry like this right so this is actually part of the teddy bear here and then I'll just run along the edge. Okay, so now we have nice soft edge. And I think in this case, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I wanna get close, okay? And I go with a smaller brush on this transition brush too. Okay, that looks pretty good. I wanna make sure that I've got all of her hair, make sure I've got her ear. Okay, so I can literally paint while I have that brush down, okay, while I have that key held down. So I can paint right on the edge because it has a hard time here because it's the same color as the background. Can you see that? So it's having a hard time having a hard time choosing what is the subject and what is the background. So I'm just helping it. Okay. This ear looks good. That hair looks good. Shirt looks good. And the other hand looks good. Okay. So now I can just say, go back to properties and now I've got the background cut out. Okay. So now the background is transparent. So I can add whatever I want as a background, okay? Uh, I could add something abstract. I could add some flowers or some bokeh. Let's just see what I've got in here that might be appropriate for a little girl. I do have some colorful bokeh. 
right? Now keep in mind that I've made this image black and white. So if I'm adding some colorful bokeh, I may need to make the background black and white as well or put her back in color, right? Uh, mm, 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 or I could do something. I actually use this one a lot for backgrounds. Um, it's a brick wall that I photographed, right? So I'm going to do background, okay? And then I put it up to normal, okay? Transparency 100%. Then I just need to drag it below the little girl, right? And the background then shows and she's cut out, right? Now I can see that the refinement on this edge could be a little bit better. So I can go back in and, and do that. Make sure I'm on the baby layer, right? Again, I have to go back to portrait background removal and do remove again. And just go back to the transition brush. And I find that just going along the edge, it does a better job of sort of cleaning it up. Okay, like that. And it's got a bit of the background down here. So I'll just paint that. Okay, let's see how that's done. Right, see how that cleaned up the edge a little bit better? All right, now, can you see the next problem? Right, the scale of the background and the scale of the baby don't match because she was really close up. Also, the background's in color, okay? So we can make the background in black and white. So make sure you're on that layer. So I can just convert it to black and white. The other thing I need to do though is to blur it because it looks ridiculous. The background is, is completely sharp, okay? So I need to use some kind of a blur and the blur tool, the new blur tool is great. So I can literally just use Gaussian blur and blur it out, okay? Like so. Eh, about nine looks pretty good, okay? But I could even go further and make it just a nice blurred background. If I want to change the size, right, I just have to enlarge it a little bit. And then just play around with the position. Maybe I want to flip it. I think I like that better. Okay, I would still do a little bit of work. See on this edge here, there's a little white line around there. And this one is better. So that's that refinement of that edge, right? and maybe brighten the background a little bit too. Okay, so again, make sure I'm on the background layer. I just need to brighten it. Okay. Keep it soft. I'm gonna keep the background nice and soft. And that helps it blend on that edge a little bit better as well. Okay. Stuff like this bothers me, this little dot <laughs> in the background. So I'll just get rid of it. Okay, so there is a before and after. Okay. How would I get the remainder of the halo off her arm? I would just go back in and refine the mask again. So I'll go back into the layer of her. Okay, so make sure I'm on that layer. Go back into the masking, back to portrait background removal. Unfortunately, you have to do all of these steps, right? And then I would come in to 100% when I'm doing this and do a better job, right? So I'm going to get a smaller transition brush and do le less at a time. So a little bit at a time. And to see your work, all you need to do is just click that. Okay, see how that's helping? Okay, so if it's still not getting correct i would go to the edge with the object brush and then i might go on the other side with the background brush you don't have to be exact okay it clicks in right and then when i go with the transition brush that's smaller right i'm literally telling us i'm telling the program this is the edge of my subject this is where i want the mask to transition right Uh, it's not doing as well down here. So when you get closer with the background brush, it does tend to look for the edge again, okay? So I do a little brush. It's not picking it up perfectly. So I'll go back again with the transition brush. 
right? And just keep doing this. And if it's not working with this brush and the transition, I can just go and do regular masking and go to the brush, okay? So I've still got too much of the baby's arm showing. I'm just gonna go with the lower opacity on this edge here. Right. And just go until I get rid of the halo. See that? It's easier and better to do smaller strokes and just go over it more times than try and get it perfect with the first one. Okay. And if you were using a uh, like a Wacom tablet or a graphics tablet, this masking is way easier, let me tell you. I'm gonna go a little bit higher on the opacity here. Can you see how that's working? Okay. A little bit over the finger there as well. And a little bit by the cheek here. See that? Just take your time. Don't be in a rush when you're masking. Um, people who do composites literally spend hours on these things, okay? Hours. So don't expect to get it perfect. See, and my mask wasn't, my brush wasn't so good there. That's better, okay? So just keep working it like that. So just a reminder, if you enjoy my teaching style, check out Luminar Neo, the complete course now. It's a complete set of resources and information that you need to learn Luminar Neo from start to finish. To watch another video here on YouTube, just click one on the screen now. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Take care and I'll see you again soon.